Reading and welcome again to the reading of the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 5 and chapter 6. And it came to pass that as the people pressed on him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were go gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering unto him said, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and the net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. And when Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the drought of fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto him, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all and followed him. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest, and offer thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. And so much more, when there the fame of him and great multitudes came together to hear, and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay before him. And when they could not fi find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the house top and let him down to the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw the faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason in your hearts? What is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that ye may know, the Son of Man, has power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi, sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. And the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees? But thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can he make the children of the bridegroom, bride chamber fast? while the bridegroom is with them. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. 
and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them, No man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old, if otherwise, then both the new maketh a, a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles, and be spilt, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man, also having drunk old wine, straight away desireth new, for he saith the old is better. Chapter 6 And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of the corn, and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to them to do on the Sabbath days? And Jesus answering them said, Have ye not read so much as this, what David did, when he himself was hunger, and they which were with him, how he went into the house of God, and did take and eat the showbread, and gave also to them that were with him, which it is not lawful for to eat, but for priests alone. And he said unto them, that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And it came to pass also on other Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. And he knew their thoughts, and said to the man with the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he rose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? To save life or to destroy it? And looking round upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness, and communed with one another what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples. And of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. Simon, whom he also called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphys, and Simon called Zelotus, and Judas the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which was also the traitor. And he came down with them, and stood in the plain, and company of his disciples, and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him, and healed them all. And he lifted his eyes upon the disciples, and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye, have, ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, Love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despite fully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek calls offer also the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak, cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise, for if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also do the same. And if ye lend them 
lend to them of whom ye hope to receive. What thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much gain. But love ye your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, withal it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not bo both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. But why behold thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceives not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how can thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdeth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth forth not corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather their grapes. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream bet vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. And he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great.